All right, looks like we're getting going. So hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hearthstone Champions League English broadcast. I'm TJ. Joining me today is Protohype. He's going to be helping me bring you guys these matches. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing awesome, man. I'm glad to have the opportunity. Yeah, we have a pretty fun day of games in store. We're going to be broadcasting Group C of the Hearthstone Champions League. If you guys want more information, you can head over to hcl.gg um, and then slash ENG for the English language. And... Uh, you can find out more information there, including the brackets and stuff. Today, it's going to be Nimsh versus Dog, and then Trump versus Life Coach. It is a four-player bracket, and uh, two will advance on to the playoff stage that will take place next week. So, first up, Nimsh versus Dog. Looks like they're already underway as well with Druid versus Midrange Paladin. Druid for the for Dog and Midrange Paladin for Nimsh. And, oh, it's actually Secret Paladin. Okay. Secret Paladin it is then. What are your thoughts on this matchup overall, Protohype? Mm, if it is in fact Secret Paladin, uh, it does appear to be running a Cogmaster, uh, like a hybrid version. Um, a lot of people have been running those those value-centric uh, couple of mysterious challenger lists like tossed into an Aldor shell. And mm -hmm. uh, I would honestly have to give that hands down to Paladin. It's probably 70-30, honestly, in favor, of, uh, in favor of that Paladin tech. Yeah, Nimsh is... Because a little bit more mid range as well, so packs a little bit punch. Probably a smaller secret package with only uh, a couple of secrets. We'll have to see if Mysterious Challenger is how many it's going to pull when it's drawn later on in the game. Definitely. Um, it, it's strange. You usually don't see uh, competitive spirit in a list like that. Uh, you usually don't have room. Uh, typically, you're operating on Noble Sack Redemption, all the standard stuff. Maybe Repentance if you're lucky, but uh, Noble Sack is definitely a. Uh, or, I mean, uh, Competitive spirit is definitely an interesting inclusion in this particular list. It could just be just a regular mid-range paladin with competitive spirit thrown in. <laughs> sure enough, sure enough. Nimsh is, has been known in the past to be a an innovative deck builder. I believe Stop. he brought like elite torn chieftain or something to. Uh, was Did it an right? IEM? Yeah. Wow. It was elite torn chieftain or the other weird six six Gelbin Mechatork. It was one of those two. He brought it to IEM. To oh, an definitely IEM championship. Mechatork. Is that the Lepernum producer, or is that the other one? No, that's uh. That's nine seven. Gotcha. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mechanier Thermoplug. There you go. There you go. Yeah, Mechatork's a six six that summons the chicken. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that can yeah. do like turn a random minion into a chicken or something, including your own. Sounds it's pretty funny. Right. Yikes! Not a good card to get out of pile of Tritter. And Nimsh, I mean, it looks like, I mean, you said it, this matchups can be pretty lopsided. Even though Nimsh hasn't really drawn in any secrets, even just mid-range Druid in general usually does pretty well. Or, sorry, mid-range Paladin in general usually does pretty well against Druid. Yeah, most definitely. Especially when that second Shredder comes down in the following turn. I'm, I'm hard-pressed to find a way that he could actually clear this board up. But I suppose if he uh, draws into a swipe with the Drake in hand, um, he does have a couple draws to hit it. And he innervates a cast... Uh, directly off of the spell damage. So I, I don't think uh, this game is over by any means. And with the, actually with the the second Drake, it's, uh, it's actually pretty likely that he hits a swipe in the next couple turns. Yeah, but he has to. Because if he doesn't Definitely hit that does. swipe, the game's going to end pretty quickly. Especially since Nims is coming into Dr. Boom turn. And I swipe is even necessary for that also to get through Dr. Boom. Just hard for them to come back on board when they fall behind a lot. Most definitely. And if, in fact, he does not draw a swipe and he can't clear this board up before that boom comes down, the Belcher is going to wreak absolute havoc on, on that board. Uh, it's not going to be able to get to it. It'll have to be digging for swipe and a BGH, and it'll, it'll be a pretty far-fetched scenario at that point. Yeah, it's hard to take out a Sludge Belcher in damage of twos. Because you, you have to throw in pretty much everything, your entire board, in order to get through it. Yeah, especially considering his hand. That's a whole lot of cards you have to be digging for on, on one turn. I'll see if you can pick up a, a swipe here. Nope. Ancient of Lore can help him dig further, but he might be thinking he needs a swipe now with yeah, Azure Jake. He may. He may uh, looks like he's leaning towards the lore. He may, he may uh, decide that he has one more turn to stick that drake and mm -hmm. it looks like that that might actually pay off in his favor uh oh well he's gonna use the wrath to clear a little bit of power off the board he's at 12 health so he's fallen down pretty low and 
Dodge Boom's gonna come out now, and now it's... <laughs> you can see the little nod on Dog's face, he's like, yep, that's pretty much how it goes. He's gonna need a BGH off this <laughs> Azure Drake just to survive. Heart of the cards? Nope. Oh, oh nice. Not quite. Ah, actually, if he hero powers and the Boombot does not go face, theoretically, from his point of view, he's still alive, but two weapons. For sure. Yeah. And Cogma or Coghammer. <laughs> Always say Cogmaster. Coghammer in this uh, in this matchup is usually extremely brutal. Didn't get to see it uh, in this particular game, but... <laughs> he just curved out so well he didn't even need it. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem with, with the Coghammer. And True Server comes out, and good choice. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. The benefit of information is uh, yeah, definitely on the winner. Point, for sure. All right, well, Nymph is going to take game number one. And I did not see any other secrets. I think we only saw competitive spirit. Yeah, only competitive spirit. Okay. That's a little bit interesting. Yeah. Unless, it, uh, I mean, his secrets and his mysterious challengers could have just been in the bottom part of his deck, so maybe that's uh, maybe that's what it was, but a competitive spirit, since paladins do have a lot of sticky minions that you can play on curve, like Mustard Rebattle, Shield of Minibot, Pilot of Shredder, Sludge Belcher, competitive spirit can get a lot of value sometimes. Yeah, true enough, and uh, especially in those those value-centric decks when you're running uh, probably a, a few more... A few more three cost, four cost minions, it can definitely get out of hand really quickly. Mm -hmm. For sure. And it looks like they're queuing up game number two now, and right off the bat, it looks like Nimsh is throwing out the warrior. And I'm patron, no less. Yeah, patron. And Dog is going to throw out um, a paladin of his own, which appears to be mid-range, but uh, also could be... Uh, no, it's probably mid range. <laughs> if you run Aldors and Zombie Chows, it's pretty much mid range. It's a pretty safe bet. Yeah. And heal bot. <laughs> no, it's secret. <laughs> yeah, okay, the heal bot gives it away. It's definitely <laughs> secret. Alright, so what are your thoughts on this matchup? Uh, traditionally, it's been pretty tough, but has it changed at all since with new patron? Hmm. That's a good question. I haven't seen a whole lot of new patron played aside from Oskaka at BlizzCon and a couple other players playing it on stream. But I would have to I would have to give the advantage to patron, honestly. Um, especially with Nimsh's opener. Mm -hmm. Having that uh, draw engine on top of the on top of the whirlwind to deal with any muster problems. Um, you have you have a lot of you have a lot of uh, player on to shredder. You have, he doesn't have any weapons in his hand right now, but Definitely has the uh, the ability to hit them pretty quickly. So yeah, I think especially on this hand, I would have to get the, the advantage to lunch. All right, well we'll see if that's how it's going to turn out. Going to be able to get a couple draws off the acolyte here. Double patron's a little clunky. That is a little clunky with no inner edge. Um, definitely be looking for a death spot on this next turn. Just at the uh, war axe for the berserker though. It's a nice pickup. Very nice indeed. Well, quality, that's a pretty good card against patrons. Even if you can even if you don't combo with consecrate, you can usually clear off a lot of the boards that patrons can do unless they you're, you're coming at it from an empty board. Definitely. It'll still not allow your opponent to propagate more patrons, so that's always a good thing. There has to be a propagating patrons t-shirt made out of it some somewhere. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that w someone said that word once. And it's really? stuck in my head. And <laughs> every time now, when someone talks about patrons, I'm like, ah, propagate. Propagating propagate those suckers. <laughs> like it. Well, he's one turn away from the infamous patron inner age whirlwind for maximum pop propagation. Maximum propagation. He may go ahead and opt to uh, stick the, stick the Aqualife this turn and kind of throw caution to the wind on a true silver. Mm hmm. I think it's I think it's pretty likely that he just uh, mm, tempo frothing perhaps just stick another patron. Yeah, you said it yourself. This hand is really clunky, so he he feels the need to uh, to go ahead and stick these uh, on turn five under the equality consecrate that you were referencing earlier. Yeah. 
but yeah. Whoa. I think this is a pretty smart play and a lot of power to put on the table. Although yeah. I, don't, I don't know about killing off the 1-1, one, one, but uh, actually, he may have had to because of uh, the potential blessing of kings. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that's actually a pretty solid play. Blessing of kings would have been uh, pretty much a 2-for-1. Well, a w sort of, in that situation, because it would be sure. patient plus inner rage, but it would also be you're stopping him from you know, making more, uh, potentially. Absolutely. Oh. And not having an execute to deal with the uh, the second half of that creature was mm -hmm. definitely a problem that he was uh, thinking about on that particular turn. So I really like that move. From yeah. So Nymph can make four patients here if he plays the second one, plus uses the Whirlwind. Uh, but he's playing heavily into Equality Consecrate, which Dog does have. And since both patients were used to make this board, I mean, I'd say it's a near automatic. <laughs> uh, well, actually... If you look at it from a resources standpoint, it'd seem automatic, but the board isn't that scary. But he's going to go for it anyway. Can't really pass up an opportunity like this. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with the uh, the Aldor coming down whenever he plays next turn. Um, I think that was mm -hmm. a, necessary, a necessary evil from Dog's perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so Dog's got a pretty good hand against whatever... Uh, patrons can throw out because a lot of times uh, the big threats that they play are froth and berserker those mid-range threats like lotheb or um, sure. pilot of treader which aldor and true silver can deal with pretty much anything that they're going to throw out on that turn so no nymph is starting to run out of resources and with the card draw from a patron warrior coming from you know having creatures on the board that are damaged with battle rage or getting lots of value out of acolyte it might be tough for him to sort of refill his hand yeah, it's definitely looking pretty grim, I'd say. He needs to make this act like go a long way, but it looks like it's just going to eat this the second charge of this true silver champion. Yeah, you're in a, you're in a pretty rough spot as Nymph. I think he still is running on double battle rage. He still has both Death's Bite, or both copies of Death's Bite in the deck, rather. Um, oh! Oh! Whoa. Oh, what a sick pickup. That helps quite a bit. I would say so. It looks like it is going to meet the second Aldor if he just plays the next turn, which I don't see why he wouldn't. But still, the Boombox can really tear apart these smaller and, boards by Paladins. And having already used the Equality and then seeing that, uh, the Gromash is going to come down relatively uncontested over the mm -hmm. next couple of turns. So I think that may end up being a, uh, a solid follow-up to this boom. Hmm. Yeah, and this is how this New Age patron deck sort of shores up those inconsistencies with his combos, not being able to make them as powerful with Warsaw Commander. You just play bigger, you know, on curve stuff like Shredders, like Lothep, like Dr. Boom, to sort of fit the time home, between man. those. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Uh, he does have the ability to take out the boom and the boom bots if he so chooses. That will leave him with a relatively ridiculous armor total, though. I'm not sure if he's willing to uh, cop out to that just yet. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't really have a choice. I don't think he'll probably stick the heal up behind it. Go ahead and play on curve and uh, try and stack up the lay on hands on the following turn. His life total really doesn't matter that much because as Paladin, if you're if you're winning in the long game, you know, like the amount of value you're getting out of your cards is really all that matters. Um, his life yeah. total will be whittled down eventually. It looks yeah. like that's what he's going to go ahead and do. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the only play on this particular turn, I would say, from Dog's perspective. And the hero power too. Eventually, the hero power just gets out of control from the Paladin. Absolutely. <laughs> Even if you give them a hundred armor at the beginning of the game, you should be able to whittle it down. Especially yeah, without seeing, just a car. Exactly. And seeing the lay on hands in the zombie chow, I would almost uh, assume 99% of the time that you're playing just a car in this particular list. Hmm. Well, not great. Not a great draw again. He does have Grom plus Inner Rage, but he didn't put any pressure on earlier. A lot of times in, with New Patron, you get into a situation where you're putting on pressure early. With shredders, with you know, just having stronger right, creatures right. like Frothing Berserker that 
once you get to those later turns, sometimes Grom is just the only win condition that you need. So he opts to go ahead and take out the heal bot and then protect his armorsmith with the Corsair. I like this play quite a bit. Um, he's probably going to use the... Oh, he uses the Grom Ash on this turn. Okay. So... I don't know if I like that more than the Corsair and just holding back the Grom Ash for a, uh, an activator for the Execute or uh, an answer to a bigger minion, but... He decides to go with the Gromash, and it meets Eldor. Well, <laughs> the, uh... hello, Dr. Boom. Oh, hello. It's nice so of you to join that. us. Well, that changes things quite a bit. Uh, Despite, not the best at the moment, but I guess it's better than a lot of cards in his deck. Battle Rage probably would have been the best draw in that case, since he's got two damaged yes. creatures on the board, but... Certainly. Uh, Despite at least allows him to set up for a potential Battle Rage next turn with a card like Dread Corsair. Yeah, and suddenly it's not looking so bad for Ninch. Um, despite having uh, having to concede card advantage, um, and Dog definitely having the Slay on Heads next turn. But... From his perspective, it looks okay. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but from oh, no. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and now from our perspective, it looks quite disastrous because oh, yeah. you, you the 6-6 six, six body is okay you're not too worried about the pressure at this point because your armor total is high it's the implications of the ashbringer on your board well battle rage there's that good pickup yeah, that was that was definitely a clutch draw for nimsh i don't think he uh survives these next several turns without uh oh shredder a solid a solid pickup there along with the second armor smith yeah we'll take two swings of ashbringer because he can deal with the Tyrion this turn if he so chooses. It's just going to take a lot of resources to do so. Yeah, I think he has to go ahead and kill off this Tyrion. Um, he's not too worried about the uh, about the Ashbringer, considering he has a Shredder as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this Lay on Hands is going to have to do some work. Yeah, it's a bit a bit awkward having to cast that on a... Uh... Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Brutal! Chugga chugga. Dog's face when that happened. He, he's He's been there, he's done that, he's seen this before. Second quality though, that's definitely going to help. Uh, next turn he can pair it with, you know, Knife Juggler must for battle to get a board clear in order to come make himself come back. But the thing is, if he does that, he overrides his Ashbringer. But if he doesn't go for it, then he might just not be able to have enough juggles to pick off the snow chugger. Yeah, he is put in a pretty awkward position here. I, I suspect he'll go ahead and uh, concede that he'll have to use this equality and the muster to get back in the game. I don't think the... Uh, yeah, I don't, he has no other way to kill the snow chugger, really. But, uh, yeah. He can try and go for knife juggler. Uh, no, he couldn't even fit in the equality if he does that. Never right. mind. He can maybe, yeah, just chew hard this turn, and then next turn try and get the juggler with uh, definitely a couple more juggles. Oh wow, Murloc Knight as well. Next turn he's gonna have a million juggles. That's pretty nuts. A solid turnaround from from Dog off of that lay on hands is a really sick conversion. Um, and if uh, if Nimsh doesn't pull something together pretty quickly here, uh, it's looking like Dog might just be able to run away with it on. In terms of the hero power, yeah, Nips probably feels like he's in a really good spot right now, though, just because Father Berserk was probably one of the best draws he could have gotten. It puts the most pressure on the board immediately with him trading creatures and stuff. Definitely, and especially since most Paladin decks are running single equality, I'll bet he feels, I'll bet he feels pretty good about this mm -hmm. spot right now. But all right, let's see if he can be Sniper Nims. So. Uh, if he quality knife juggler, murloc knights, and then hero powers, he gets four total juggles. Because he gets two jug one juggle from the murloc knight, two juggles from the two token spawn, and then one juggle from whatever the murloc knight spawns. Sure. Having no cards in hand, he might actually just go ahead and opt to go all in on the quartermaster uh, for next turn. I suspect that's why he hasn't played it already, but murloc knight is putting considerably more power on the board, so he may just opt to do that. It looks like he's going to. Yeah, and if he gets a charge more lock, I mean, that's a, f 
a pretty much nearly a full clear, as long as too many juggles don't go face, which one already did, so... The skillful sniping of that Armorsmith first. Yeah, wow. Wow! That worked out pretty well, I'd I would, say. I would say that was almost the best case scenario for Doug. Yeah. And Despite's off, off the top is going to allow him to deal with a little bit of this board, but if he kills the Murloc Knight, the Spirit Fin something walker. The thing? <laughs> yeah, it's going to draw him a card. So it's a little bit awkward, and he throws out the well played, and he concedes. Okay, realizes that he's probably not going to be able to come back in this one. And yeah, dog Leon, ties it up. Leon Hand's definitely putting in work in that game. Mm -hmm. And the double equality from, uh, from Dog. Definitely uh, outlasting Nimsh's patience. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's going to be tied up one to one going into the next matchups, the next game. And uh, um, let me see if I can get the deck line lists, uh, deck lineups here for these players. Um. I know I have them somewhere. Well, it looks like we're already going into game number three. And uh, ignore the score, but on the side, it is tied up one to one. Dog is going to throw out the Warrior, which looks to be Control. And Nimshi is going to throw out the Druid. And I'm curious to see if people are still on Fatigue Warrior or if they have just moved on to Explicit, Big Minions, not Double Brawl, etc. I'm not sure what people are favoring nowadays. I haven't seen a ton of warrior. People have been kind of on their on their Reno train. Mm -hmm. Nothing, uh, nothing too standard. But uh, we'll see what Dog has in store for next year. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I was... So these games, I believe, are being played on the like, European servers, which is why Dog's Warrior is not golden. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was very confused for a moment. Uh, Darnass is aspirant on turn two. Strong play, especially since Dog does not have a fiery war axe to answer it. Into more ramp, wow. This is hands pretty good. If he plays Wild Goat this turn and his Darnass' is aspirant lives, then that means Nips can play a Drew the Claw on turn That's three, similar. which is really powerful. I think Nimsh will probably smell blood here. Uh, dog not having the fire Orax, and he'll, he'll probably commit to the second Darnassus and then Wild Growth afterwards. Um, I would suspect that since Dog does not have the coin, that is pretty much the only play. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a situation here where you don't see a fire Orax and you don't commit to the second body and uh, try to kill off this armor smith. Yeah. Do you want to dedicate? A shield slam to a Darnassus Aspirant to deny the ramp? Mm, that's a good question. Going into turn five, he may have to. I don't yeah, there there are quite a few uh prime plays coming up from Nimsh's point of view. Yeah. Uh, We're Dog definitely knows that being a druid player himself. Yeah. You going into turn four, you're worried about Pyoda Treader, but going into turn five you're worried about Judah the Claw, Azure Drake, Lotheb. Definitely. The power level increases so much when you jump from four to five mana, so and there's no guarantee that he's uh, getting an answer coming out of the other end of that turn mm -hmm. as well. So he, may, he definitely doesn't want to concede him in the six mana as well. Still hasn't found a way to deal with the second one yet, though. That's a bit rough. Accolade of Pain not going to do it immediately, but at least it's most likely going to get a couple draws because if Nimsh dedicates his mana to playing a 5-drop or a 6-drop, then he's not going to have enough to say Wrath the Accolade right. of Pain. So if he gets an activator for the Accolade of Pain, then... Ooh. It's an interesting taunt there. Um, I think I... Not seeing the not seeing the War Axe or a Death Spite, I may have considered charging that in to keep him off of any potential value with the Accolade. Mm -hmm. But... It's... Can see why Nimsh didn't. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to pay off for him. Yeah, Dog just isn't finding anything. Nimsh hitting that keeper off the top. Um, that, that appears to be the only play on this particular turn. He he could have opted to boom, but 
yeah, it's it does come down to to be a bit risky against uh, against a deck playing uh, playing brawl and executes and a bunch of easy answers. Um, it seems like dog is running not not your your typical control warrior with uh, double bash. Yeah, um, I wonder what he cuts for those. A lot of times when you see double bash, you see some of the early game cut. Like the cool taskmasters, or sure. sometimes even acolyte of pains, I've I've been seeing cut for the bash, but yeah, especially in some of those fatigue lists, a lot of people have been opting to go through uh, the acolyte list route. Yeah, because when you're in a a mirror matchup or another control versus control, a lot of times you just your acolytes are dead the entire game. Absolutely, you never want to play them. Yeah, I've been in control warrior versus control warrior situations over the past month where I my acolytes are in my hand at the very end of the game when we're in fatigue. And I play them when I'm sure my opponent doesn't have any way, just to get that one extra f damage in every turn sure. for fatigue, like after all the cards have been played. So that's that's the role of Acolyte of Pain in Control Warrior Mirrors, usually. Finish opting to... Ooh, I thought he was actually going to kill off the Aspirant, but he kills off the Keeper instead, mm -hmm. wanting, uh, wanting the ability to top deck Savage Rark and potentially close out the game on the next turn. I actually like that play. Yeah. Uh, Throwing away the uh, higher stats just to have the ability to draw those outs. So it it seems like Nimsh has had control of the game the whole game, which he has, but he hasn't managed to put on much pressure. But which it doesn't really matter too much, especially since wars usually have a lot of armor gain. Sometimes you can't get through, and even with sure. that, he's still on like a draw to win the game with Force of Nature Savage or so. Definitely. Well, not anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that would be 24 damage. Wow, and he draws it. Wow. Yikes. It's not quite there. It's two damage off, I believe. Unless he's just going to go for it anyway. Yes, having the Shredder on board, uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting play. I don't think I don't think Boom is too strong against the Death and I think Nemsh recognizes that. He's just going to go in and uh, see if he can come out on the other side. But... Dog having double bash may have something to say about that. That's a bold call. It really just trying call. to end the game. And Dog picks up the BGH, which against what seems to be an inevitable Dr. Boom next turn, unless Nymphs draws into... Um, well, I guess... <laughs> that's... Dog is just getting the short end of the stick with these Shredders, man. Oh, wait. That's brutal. Like the one thing that he can't kill with his, or one of the things that he can't kill with his uh, Despite Swing plus his Cruel Taskmaster. He would have had to have 4 health or Divine Shield. I guess he can kill it actually if he goes face. It's still yeah, though. If he it, wants to. He yeah. definitely wants to keep his, uh, keep his, op keep his options open for yeah. a, an execute off the top. And it looks like he's going to do that. He's just not going to take the damage. Yeah. All right. Still preserves his cruel taskmaster. Still gets the armor up in. So he's at a comfortable ten health. That means no co no one card uh, will kill him. Combination of two would. Yeah, and if Nimsh had gone in on the Doctor Boom uh, on the previous turn, he would have actually not been in this game at all. Mm -hmm. So that was that was a pretty solid call on his part. Um, yeah, and even even a, uh, a Doctor Boom on an open board, still a really solid play, even if it is getting BGH. So, I guess he realizes that he, he needs to armor up. Oh, no, he's on 9 mana. I'm just kidding, yeah. This is... With BGH, this is pretty much the only way he could navigate this play. Definitely. And I think a Savage or a Force would end the game from uh, Nimsh's perspective. So uh, Savage is... is... Yeah, yeah, because of the Keeper of the Go. Yeah, that'll be... Wow, quite even... the draw. Pretty nuts. And it looks like Nimsh is going to take a 2-1 to one lead. So he's, he's found a win with Druid and Paladin. But he's still yet to find a win uh, with that Patron Warrior deck. So that's the one deck that he has left remaining. Um, I actually went... I did get the decks here. So I'm going to see if I can find a way to 
get those on the screen in a second since we can't see them from the feed that we have. And uh, so Dog has Paladin Druid Warrior and Nimsh has Paladin Druid Warrior. So wow, they actually have the exact same lineups. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, Nimsh opting to go the uh, the more aggressive route on the Warrior deck. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure if that'll pay off for him against Dog's seemingly fatigue uh, double bash deck. Um, especially if he's running double brawl. It's it's very difficult for, for Patron to go in on that matchup. Yeah. Um, especially, there, yeah, on any given turn, there really aren't uh, a whole lot of openings that you can really hope to, hope to get under. Yeah. And we haven't actually seen much of Dog's deck, the way it's built. Uh, we saw double bash. Uh, we saw that he runs Acolyte of Pain, and we see that he runs Cool Taskmaster, so it's more of the top end that we haven't seen. Uh, Ysera's sure. been pretty staple in Control Warriors. Uh, Justicart, that's a that's a good... Um, I mean, that's pretty much in every Control Warrior, because it's you play that and it's auto-win against certain archetypes, like Freeze Mage. Definitely. Um, but what threats he runs sort of in between there, in that mid-game, we've yet to see, so... Nibsh, on the other hand, it's pretty much the standard new patron. Uh, that list that very similar to the list of Skaka ran at the World Championships. With Dr. Sure, Boom and Treaders. Sure. Actually, the sand from Nimsh looking really solid against uh, a control warrior running um, what you would perceive to be a slower list with, with Brawls. Um, having, having those those two piloted shredders is really brutal for, for any warrior to deal with, much less uh, a deck that is sacrificing early game to fit that high rank. Yeah. Uh, on the uh, on the bottom. It's one of the toughest cards for them to deal with because most of their early removal is centered around weapons. And Most when definitely. You, when you have to spend two swings killing a piloted shredder, not only two swings, but also potentially, you know, six, seven, eight health. To right. attack into that paladin shredder, it it adds up over time. And if you have two, all of a sudden, you need two weapons to deal with it. Plus, you need lots yeah, of it's health. A, it's a very different discussion, and uh, we we see double BGH coming out from Dog. So he he's definitely fixated on beating the control mirror, not expecting Patron at all. And uh, I feel like that may come back to bite him because this hand is looking really rough against the second shredder coming down. Yeah, and for the first time in a long time, double BGH, even on ladder seems like it has a decent place because it helps your matchup against control warrior but it also helps sometimes it, it, you know it helps your consistency of draw against secret paladin or against uh, aggro druid with failure sure, that's a good point yeah all of those decks definitely even the aggressive ones are, are definitely putting down a lot of pressure um with seven or higher uh, attack minions it's a solid point and that new shade um the 7-4 that puts the curse Ancient in your Shade, deck? Yes, yes. Ancient Shade, yeah. I've seen some people experimenting with that in Aggro Druid. And yeah, so... Rat was, uh, or the Rat, or our teammate on Follow Esports, was definitely advocating that card pretty heavily going into uh, going into the set review that we did. Yeah, uh, I mean... it's It's turned out to be pretty true. Um, the, that card's power level was largely underestimated uh, on many fronts. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been pretty impressive to see. I agree. I think that'll definitely pick up some traction. I don't think a lot of people prefer Felviver better because the 8 health and the 8 attack uh, is a little bit stronger, and the downside sure. isn't as relevant in, in a deck like Aggro Druid, I think, but I think Ancient yeah. Shade has a lot of potential. Definitely. I was I was thinking the same way, uh, running one or the other, but he's actually running them, and uh, a couple other players as well have been running them in tandem. Side by side. Wow, that's definitely. bold. That's yeah, a lot of very, threat to deal with. Drops. It is. Yeah. All right. Well, these powder shredders are, you know, they're still going along. But Dog does have both death bites in that first, you know, ten cards of his deck. So that's how you got to deal with it. And with Just Guard True Heart plus Shield Block in his hand, he's going to have plenty of armor game as this game goes on. Definitely. Uh, oh no, the captain's spirit. <laughs> All right, Dog catching a bit of a break there after the uh, the mini bot and the former coming down. Uh, but still, Nimsh not in the best spot here with the, the pickup of that second death spike for Dog. Mm -hmm. So Dog has faced a snow chugger when he had a weapon uh, from Pilot of Shredder, the shielded mini bot. <laughs> and he had also gotten from his own shredder just a novice engineer. So this is the first like good break <laughs> Dog has had. Out here. Yeah. 
It's hard out here for a dog. This is an annoying board to deal with, because you can't attack into that Dread Corsair without giving Nimsh card draw from the Accolade of Pain. For sure. I think Dog may opt to go ahead and start digging for a Brawl if he is playing two. Uh, he may actually have to do it anyway, just to hit uh, maybe a Shield Slam or something, but Accolade definitely uh, proving to be more annoying than it should be on any given turn. Yeah, it's very true. It's depending on whether or not he should attack and just give in. For sure. Nope. If he is playing double brawl, I suspect he will just hold the weapon. Or if he has a lot of faith in drawing his one brawl. <laughs> the heart of the cards, man. Dog's looking a little stressed now. He's, uh... If he doesn't get that brawl, then he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Especially with Frothing Berserker in the hand of Nimsh. Can't get that damage immediately, but it, it just gives you like a one uh, a one turn window to draw into removal for it before it starts hitting you for a lot. And dog, he's at 18 health. Even though he does have all that armor gain, he's starting to falter. Definitely. Um, yeah, he's he's in a position where he has to swing and play the Belcher and just give up the uh, give up the value play. And Nimsh does have excellent answers to to just about any creature that uh, dog will be playing on this particular turn. Mm -hmm. So, I, I suspect unless he picks up the Brawl, this is only going to get worse. Yeah, Fire War Axe, not the best pickup. He plays, he can play Jessica True Heart here and start armoring up with the tank up. To start getting out of range of things, but then he still has to worry about, you know, the issue of, well, his Jessica is just going to get traded into by the Acolyte of Pain. And you know, get even that's more an draws. interesting point. Honestly, if he if he plays the Justicar this turn, he goes up to twenty two, and if the Aqualite is run ran in like we suspect it would be, that would be he's got five six damage. Honestly, it's a pretty it's a pretty decent compromise. Like having the having the hero power coming down next turn, and I don't know if he has another way to get back in the game. Honestly, without playing the Justicar and playing the playing the Belcher behind it, really does force Nimch onto uh, onto killing the Justicar. So yeah, I think that was a pretty valid line, honestly. Yeah. Uh, he does take control of the board, though. And uh, if he waits until turn 10 for the Justicar, then he can double dip. Six armor in one turn. It's OP. <laughs> it's OP. And he can play Ysera next turn if he realizes he wants an immediate threat on the board. Haven't seen any removal, I don't think, from Nimsh's side. So, still hold on to those executes. This double BJ is proving to be a. Uh... Quite a nuisance in uh, in this matchup against Patron. It's tempo BGH is. I mean, there's two BGH targets, but they usually don't come down until pretty late in the game. So getting both of them in the first ten cards was really tough. Definitely. We'll see if Dog can make use of those. But Nimsh right now, he's got to find a way to fight on this board and execute used. That might. Prompt dog to just plop down that Ysera. Hmm. Being at being at fifteen and seeing that death. Oh yeah, never mind. His health you. total, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, it has to be it has to be pretty scary. Um, see, honestly, this is why I really would have liked to see the Justicar card come down last turn, having the BG, or having the uh, yeah. the Belcher to protect it coming down with another hero power. I feel like he would have yeah. been out of any particular danger, and that's actually going to be game. Yeah. And with that, Nim, she's going to take the series 3-1. to one. I was thinking, maybe you just throw down the Ysera, and it, you know, if he has Grom, he has Grom. You, if he has Grom into Rage, you're not going to be able For to sure. fight against it anyway, so kind of got to take that risk, but who knows? Maybe the Jessica last turn would have done it, but we won't know for sure as Nimsh takes the series 3-1. to one. He'll move on to the winner's bracket. Keep in mind, these are double elimination group stages. Um, so, uh, Nimsh will face the winner of Life Coach versus Trump, and then Dog will face the loser of that matchup. And uh, you lose twice in the group stages, you're out. The top two from each group move on to the playoff stage that happens next week. So big congratulations to Nimsh, who he's been a he's been a caster for a long time. So I see him get back in the players' chair. And yep, <clears throat> so uh, Life Coach versus Trump. 
is coming up next, but uh, we are going to go to a quick break while the players get set uh, before we jump into that next matchup, guys. So don't go anywhere. Have some Champions League. More action will continue right after this.